This video demonstrates how VMware Analyzer can be used to very easily create comprehensive and detailed analyses for current malware threats such as user mode malware, kernel rootkits, malicious documents, for example Word or PDF or Excel files and also for malicious URLs. As an example I have selected the latest Wiper malware which yeah, is suspected to be involved in the latest Sony breaches. To create analyses, you have to submit files to our system either by using the web interface or by utilizing our API. After submitting a file, you are forwarded to the sample page where you find some meta information and also information about prior submitters. And if already analyses have been created, you can access those analyses here. In our current configuration, but this is fully customizable, we always create two different analyses for executables. Both are um, created on a Windows 7 system and in one of those systems we have installed all the latest service packs and the other one is completely unpatched. Um, we do this in order to yeah, get as much analysis data as possible out of each sample. For example, there are some kernel rootkits which do no longer work with current service packs installed. If I click here on the Reanalyze button, two new jobs are created that are yeah, immediately started, each one on a different uh, machine. And I will now connect to one of those machines via VNC. This, of course, normally is not necessary when doing malware analysis. I'm doing this just to demonstrate how fast and with what high performance the system is running. And even if the kernel rootkit is currently analyzed and all running processes of the system have to be monitored. Yeah, you can interact with the system in a complete normal way. Okay, let's now take a look at a previously created analysis and just pick one of those. Um, yeah, this is how the overview page of each analysis looks like. Um, all the data is divided and grouped into several categories. Some of the data we provide are just taken from the static analysis of the file. Um, some covers statistics, others helps you to um, automatically classify how dangerous a certain file is. Mm, and the most comprehensive and detailed information, of course, stems from our dynamic analysis. Let's start with the overview page here. Um, again, you get a lot of meta information about the sample itself, about the analyzer, the particular version of VMware analyzer that was involved and also some additional information of the particular analysis. Um, the remarks section here contains some information that is um, special. So for example, if the boot sector was modified or kernel code was executed, this is so important that it is also shown here in the remarks section. All the other um, behavior will be shown on a later tab. What you further can access here is the complete archive of an analysis take a look into such an archive. Um, the archive contains all the screenshots that were taken. It contains all the log files, which I will show you in a moment. It contains the high-level report, the HTML pages, which we are currently viewing. Um, furthermore, all the dropped files are here, and, yeah, and so on and so forth. On the lowest level, we create a so-called function log file that contains all the function calls of the malware, no matter if these function calls are calling into an API, a direct system service, or some other function, or even if they are directing into just the middle of an existing function instead of obeying the um, intended calling convention. So what you get here is a list of all the processes and threads that have been monitored and for each thread you get a list of all the uh, function calls and in case a function call is performed for which we have the prototype and that includes all APIs and system services, we do not only extract the information that a certain function was called but get all the also all the parameter values of the input parameters, output parameters and return values. These function logs are rather long and contain very much information so in most cases you're not interested in the function log. Um, you may be more interested in the generic log file, which is a normalization of the data from the function log that contains only the system critical APIs that may be used for accessing the hard drive, the network, or whatever. 
And although, um, let me scroll down a bit here. Uh, okay, although the particular function names are still contained here, this is just for debugging purposes, um, but in general, everything is generalized. So for example, you get here the information that information about a certain file is gathered or that in a handle for a certain module um, is obtained or here that something was written into a file. And the data representation here totally abstracts away from all the implementation details of the operating system or the API. So no matter um, if you have called a specific um, API from user land or if you perform the direct system call um, to access the hard disk, you will always get this XML element here that states that something was written into a file. And yeah, the file object um, has been created before. So you get the file name here of that particular operation and the data is given in a binary form that can be accessed with further tools. Nevertheless, in most cases, you're also not interested in the generic log file, but in the more high level data we generate uh, on top of this file. Um, okay, if we scroll down this overview page, you see here the screenshots we take from the executing malware. And below that, we have the graph of all the monitored processes. In this particular case, the graph is rather large. Normally, it's much smaller. But since we have detected the execution of kernel rootkit code, we have to monitor every single running process of the system. However, you can see here that most of the processes are yeah, displayed in a light gray color, and that means that they were monitored, but after all, they only have executed legitimate code that belongs either to the operating system or the running application. If we scroll in, uh, zoom in, we see here, okay, this is the first sample, the initial sample we have submitted to our system for analysis, and this one creates a copy of itself and then sets up a daemon, and a daemon in this case is um, a Windows service on that system, and then you can see that this service creates more processes. And of course, we not only track the creation of new processes and daemons, but we also um, track injection of code into running processes, the creation of scheduled tasks and um, creation of APCs and so on and so forth. And as, so, uh, as soon as one of the monitored processes somehow um, injects code or yeah, interferes with the running process, um, that new process is monitored as well. Below the graph, you get a list of all the monitored processes with more information about why they are monitored after all. And below that, you get a list of all the dropped files, namely those which have been created or modified by one of the running uh, pro uh, monitor processes. And you can download each of them for yeah, further post-processing. Okay, this is the overview page. Um, besides that, we provide some analysis data that was extracted statically from the involved PE files. As you can see here, we have all the strings. Um, we have information about the imports from the certain libraries. And furthermore, we give information about all the section table. And we use a lot of um, PE signatures in order to also detect the compiler, for example, uh, that was used to create that file or some packer or cryptors and so on and so forth. Now for the most interesting part of our analysis, and that is the behavior. Um, all the data shown here is automatically, automatically uh, created um, on top of the generic log I have shown you before. So the behavior data, um, the behavior section starts with a map, the world map where all those countries um, are colored uh, in which certain hosts have been connected. Um, we enrich our data with the help of GeoLookup databases. So for most of the hosts, we can um, provide additional information about the location. Here we have the monitored process graph again. And then there is a large section that has one subsection for each monitored process. And you can, of course, open these subsections and take a deeper look, which we'll do in a moment. Um, but you can also see here on the right hand, um, that for each monitored process, we state how many um, critical function, host functions, and how many network operations have been monitored. And as I've, mo uh, as I've mentioned before, most of the processes that have been monitored and are showed here in light gray color did not perform any 
of those malicious functions but only executed legitimate code that belongs either to the operating system or to the particular applications. So now let's take a look at the first process. Um, again, some meta information. Here you find all the memory regions and these regions are either uh, loaded and mapped libraries or heaps and stacks and so on and so forth. And most of them you can dump here for yeah further processing them with some tools. Um, I scroll down. Okay, this is the section that um, covers the uh, host operation that have been executed, and we can see here that this sample only creates a copy of itself using a certain command line of a, um, operator. Yeah, and furthermore, get some information about the underlying system. So the first process does not perform very much interesting stuff. Let's continue with the second one. This second copy, as you can see here, it's the second one that was started with the minus i command line parameter. And what this process does is it's in it installs a Windows service. Um, again, it's using the same image file this time by specifying the minus k uh, comment line switch and then it starts the service and yeah that's it for this process. Now if you are further interested in how the uh, particular service installation is performed you can click here on the function button and then you're immediately uh, transferred to that particular part of the function lock um, that yeah that is correlating to that high level uh, representation of a malicious functionality. And yeah, in this case, it was a create service W API, and you get all the um, parameters, the return values, and so on and so forth. And you can scroll up and scroll down and see all the other functionality that was um, executed by that particular thread, either before or after that specific API call. Okay, now let's take a look at a different process, which is also doing interesting stuff. We take this process 10 here that is created later on by the chain of new starter processes and services. And if we look at what, yeah, what file operations are executed here, we see that this process first creates a file in the Windows system that uses the sys extension, like it is normally used for kernel drivers. And if we take a deeper look of what particular data is written into that file. Okay, we see here an MZ and down there a PE and yeah, this most uh, this most probably is an execu Windows executable. And yeah, this is also uh, confirmed by the fact that later on a kernel driver is installed on that particular file and then that driver is started. And yeah, okay. Um, Besides that, we also see uh, the opening of a very word named um, device, i.e. raw disk and then something physical drive, blah, 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 blah. This is very weird and we will later see um, what this device uh, means and where it comes from. Um, as we will see, it is a device created by the uh, kernel driver that is installed and that device can be used to physically um, access a hard disk uh, at arbitrary positions. And then we later on also see a write operation on that device and this write operation directly is trans, uh, transform, uh, transferred to the MBR of the local hard disk and if we take a deeper look at what particular data is written to the MBR we see that it is um, destroyed by overwriting the, the bootloader with just some A's. Yeah, this is really bad because then your system can no longer be uh, booted up anymore. Okay, is there any else here? No, I don't, don't see anything. Okay, if we now scroll down a bit, uh, we see there are much more processes. Most of them um, do not perform malicious stuff, but legitimate code only. Um, but we have one more process here that performs 6,000 different host operations. So this is a bit... Yeah, not a bit, but this is really suspicious. And if we take a deeper look of what is going on here, we see that all of them, or most of them, nearly all of them, um, are from the file category. And if we take a deeper look, this takes the time. Okay. Um, yeah, we see that some 
files are created, but then after a while, we see that all the files on our hard disk are deleted. And yeah, this again is an evidence for the, yeah, the, the real, real critical and, and maliciousness of this, um, of this malware. Okay, that's for the user mode behavior on a quick um, look. Um, we furthermore have a tab here called kernel behavior. Of course, this is only existence if kernel code execution is involved, but in case of this malware, this is the case. Now, this malware does not perform very much uh, inside kernel mode. Um, in summary, the, the kernel driver is only used to allow um, direct hard disk access to the malware. Um, if we take a deeper look here, what is going on, the first code block is executed when the driver is loaded. And what is happening here is that, that this weird device, which we have seen before, that EI raw disk device is created and um, that can then later be accessed. And yeah, these code blocks here um, are executed when to the the device is written and you can see how yeah, the, the hard disk is wiped out. Um, there will be more videos on actual kernel rootkit analysis, but since this is just a quick tour, we will skip the kernel part for now. Furthermore, we provide some statistics information about the execution of a mirror. So first of all, we give you visualization of all the certain categories of functionality that have been executed by the mirror. If you click on a category, you get a more detailed view of what particular APIs or functions have been called for that malware. You can do this for all the different categories, what kind of registry operations, for example, have been executed and so on. Um, besides that, we, uh, yeah, we visualize a particular distribution of the categories over time. So you can see here at the beginning, a lot of different operations are executed. And then later on, we see most of the time a file um, deletion operation is executed, as we see, as we have seen in the behavior report. Furthermore, we also um, monitor the CPU utilization of the complete system, but also um, for the particular processes. And sometimes, yeah, you can get a very quick uh, impression of what particular process is doing something. And very often, you also see here some periodic peaks. Um, for example, by threats that periodically try to contact CNC servers or just check if certain registry keys have been deleted and, yeah, and set them up again. On the highest abstraction level, we calculate a so-called severity score that, yeah, that specifies how dangerous this particular sample is or how risky it is to execute it. And yeah, in this case, this is really high. The, the, the calculated score value is really high. And this stems from the um, suspicious artifacts that we have identified during execution, like, for example, that the, M the fact that the MBR is overwritten or the fact that code in with this kernel privileges is executed is, is really risky and results in a high value. And we also detect many other high-level um, behavior patterns, like, for example, the installation of a system service or that a DNS requ requ uh, request was made or some remote host is contacted and so on and so forth. Okay, that's it for um, this quick tour on the Wiper malware. In upcoming videos, we will demonstrate more detailed kernel rootkit analysis and also contemporary um, evasion techniques that is used by latest malware threats and how we can easily overcome them and provide, despite of them, uh, yeah, a complete insight on all the malicious behavior and comprehensive reports.